What's up, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, allow me to introduce myself. Around here, I'm known as Miss Wallace. The internet knows me as D. Lanise, but you can call me Danny. I know I've already told y'all I am a beast of a reading teacher, but I think most of what makes me so successful is my organization. So today, I want to get into how I set up my classrooms, how I set up for my small groups, and all the things that I use to keep me organized so that I have better management, easier workflow balance. I know where everything is, the kids know where everything is. My systems, my management, it allows for easier flow through the day because they know we do this we do this we do this we do this that requires this material that requires this paper that requires this section of the room to be utilized whatever it is they already know the first several days of school maybe the first week or two that's all we do is go through all the materials where they go when we use them what they're used for all of that stuff so that when we start getting into lessons we're moving so I wanted to share that with you guys so that as you watch me teach lessons in the future or teach parts of the lesson in the future you too are already familiar with the supplies the materials we're just gonna get that out the way right now let's rip off the band-aid let's get into it okay so the first thing I want to talk about is how I keep my student supplies organized so that they can easily transition from one part of the lesson to the next at the beginning of the year, once all students are assessed and I have my roster, I make every student a bag with all of their supplies, which we'll go through in a second. And I also make them a folder. Okay. This is probably one of my holy grails of organization. Every single small group has their area kids know which folders and which bags are theirs it allows them at the beginning of the year I do it but after a couple months no schedule no routine they know somebody will come over and grab bags somebody will come over and grab folders they pass everything out and we get started at the end of class they put their stuff away somebody collects bags somebody collects folders they come put it right back on the shelf and they're free to go it just helps us keep it moving. It takes up so much time when you have to pass out each piece of supplies, each piece of paper, each story, collect it, and then you gotta figure out what to do with all the papers, where all the pencils go, or no, 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 nobody's doing that. Everybody has their own. It makes the day much more simple. Try it. In each folder, Every day they open their folder. This one is empty because I've already done this group today. But they know their work for the day is in the front of their folder. All past work for me to share with their homeroom teacher, their parent, administration, wherever it needs to go, goes in the back of their folders. Now normally when they open this, like I said, it'll be their work for the day. Here's what that looks like. They will normally have this paper in there. This is the paper that I use for dictation. I made it up for myself because it just made sense. Again, I like easy organized stuff. I like routine, I like systems, I like habits. So I do the same thing in this classroom with my students. This is their multi-sensory new sound introduction sheet for their dictation, words, and sentences. At the top, they put their name and date, of course, and then the new sound we're working on, whatever the keyword is, so they have that in their mind. These are used to write in their dictation words and the bottom is used to write their dictation sentence. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why would I even set it up like this? Where did this come from? As we continue to tour the classroom, this makes a little bit more sense. I'll show you. This is my clean copy sheet. In Oregon Gillingham, they encourage you to have a clean copy of all the dictation words, all the dicta dictation sentences, red word sentences, cell application, all the things. So that once the students complete their part, you can show them the correct way or the correct spelling, the correct sentence, whatever it is, you have a clean copy that they can read, see, and 
if they made any mistakes, they're able to clearly see what their mistakes were. If not, they're able to celebrate that their paper looks like your paper. So my clean copy sheet is set up with different boxes for their different dictation words at the top, and then their lines at the bottom for their sentences. And that is why I set their paper up like that. So that when they're checking their paper, as they look at my clean copy, it's set up exactly the same. So they're not searching the board, looking for whatever word, they're not searching, looking for whatever sentence, but it's look, it's a mirror of what they should have on their papers. It works very well. It also helps me so that as I'm planning my lessons, if I know what my dictation words and sentences are, I do them in advance. And as you see me teach a lesson, you'll see my words will already be up here. When I come to check my clean copy sheet, I'll say, let's check this word, flip it over, there it is, and then they can quickly check their paper, make sure their words, their sentences match mine, and we just keep it moving. Bing, bang, boom. I'll also keep all of my red word cards right in there, so when we're doing a red word lesson, all I have to do, go over, pull it out. There are all our cards right here. The other thing that goes in their folder is their red word sheet. They have the front, where they do their multi-sensory writing of the red word, then they write it on the bottom a couple times, then they have the back where they write it from memory, and then they have a couple more dictation sentences. Again, when I do a red word lesson, this will make a little bit more sense. The last thing that is usually in their folder is their story for that lesson. All lessons don't come with a story, some do. So if that lesson comes with a story, that'll also be in their folder, and again, they know what papers and what supplies go with what lessons. So it moves pretty quickly. Their bags. Every student gets a bag with supplies in it. They'll have their tap mat, which is used for their dictation words and dictation sentences. I do have right hand and left hand tap mats. So every student is thought of and taken care of. They have their pencil, of course. They gotta write. I also give every single student a whiteboard, a marker, and an eraser. A lot of times in OG lessons, you will see instructors using sand trays. We use whiteboards, markers, and erasers instead. They're just as effective. I actually like them a little bit more because the students are able to work on their hair and writing at the same time. I have a lot of students who do reversals. And so when we're going through this portion of the lesson, when I see students writing, I can clearly see what they're struggling with, how they're writing, how their hand is moving and all that stuff so that when it comes time to write on their paper we've kind of already worked through some of those things during the warm-up it's just helpful it makes sense it, it, it makes sense to me and my kids so that's what we be doing if it, if it doesn't work for you that's okay you know different strokes for different folks for our red word stuff they have their red word screen their crayon for their red word stuff of course and then last but certainly not least we have vowel sticks that is what goes in their bags and in their folders. It helps us keep the lessons moving. It helps us stay organized.